the Hoosiers were looking to improve their conference road record. But Illinois used balanced scoring by Kawan Garris and Jerry Hester to defeat Bob Knight and company. The Hoosiers Roadshow now visits the Nittany Lions in University Park, Pennsylvania. Penn State coach Bruce Parkhill has the Lions playing solid defense, led by senior John Ameche. Last Saturday, Penn State reported its first Big Ten win ever against Ohio State. Will Penn State get its first win ever against Indiana? Indiana, Penn State next. TTV4 Productions and Raycom Sports present Big Ten Conference Basketball. Today's game is brought to you by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by ATA. ATA always has low fares for your winter escape to the sun. On ATA, you're on vacation. We are live from the Recreation Hall in University Park, Pennsylvania, on the campus of Penn State University. The Indiana Hoosiers at two and two come onto the floor to a rousing round of booze as they'll take on Penn State, who are two and one in the conference. Hello everybody, John Laskowski and Ted Kitchell. Quite a bit of emotion already before the game is tipped off. This Penn State team feels they can get a victory here against Bobby Knight and the Indiana Hoosiers. And the guy who's going to have to lead them is John Amete, the big center inside. And as you mentioned, the crowd is really into it already. And Amete will be a main focus for him, a guy that averages 17 points a game. He also gets 11 rebounds. He's big, he's strong, and probably most importantly, he's very smart inside. He's He's not a real quick guy, but he's a guy, he's going to get to do a lot of shot fakes, he's going to get up into you and try to get to the foul line. As you see the comparison, Andre Patterson will get the start, and he will be going against the Meche tonight. Patterson does get the start against the Meche. Indiana will count heavily on Henderson and Evans to score inside. Yeah, they need to score inside. It's a team that Andre Patterson can use his quickness, he can get around people. They also get, will have to go inside to Henderson, but they're going to have to get some guard scoring. And Illinois the other night only got five points out of the guards. All right, time now for the Coquilin fueling factor. For Penn State, they feel like their time has come. They've watched their football team for a long time get all the national recognition. They feel like it's time for them to get some recognition with a victory over Indiana. And they need to get some points inside. Ameche and Secunda must score for Penn State. For Indiana, They've got to be a better screening team. They need to set good, solid screens and get some people open for some 15-foot jump shot. And direction, probably most important, they need some direction from their guard. They need some leadership out front if this team expects to win games on the road. Stop by your local Coquilin. With any 8-gallon fuel purchase, receive a Coquilin mini fuel tanker truck for only 99 cents. Coquilin, over 55 years of family pride, makes a difference. And we'll be back with the starting lineups in tonight's game after these messages. Hello. Ah, uh, just the brother-in-law. You still using that passive display? It's not broke. Welcome to an Ameritech testing town. You gonna finish that? Guess not. One of several real towns here in the Midwest where people try out real breakthroughs in communications technology. Hello? Charlie? Hello? Charlie? If a product doesn't make it out of here, it doesn't make it out. Don't budge it too small. Hey, Lester, see how the fish are biting. All right. Video activate. Turtle Lake. They are. Separate checks, guys? I'll get it. At Ameritech. Anyone know how to make this thing stop flashing 12? We believe that if technology doesn't work for people, Thanks. it doesn't work. Ameritech, your link to better communication. Hey, Randy! 
going to do the whole game tonight? <laughs> okay. Looking good, looking good. Good to have you, good to have you. Papa John's right back. Got you. How you, Doc? Time now for the Papa John starting lineups. The regulars for Indiana, Evans and Henderson. A couple changes. Patterson in the middle, add some quickness. Reed back at guard, see if he can give us a little direction for Penn State. Is he Carlton, a great athlete, Secunda, a good shooter. Ameche, Donovan Williams, very quick guard, and then Earl kind of sets things up. Hart will have to stop Donovan Williams outside. We want to remind everyone to call your papa. Papa John's Pizza is waiting to deliver you a perfect pizza at the perfect price. Call now, and you can be perfectly full by halftime. And we'll be back with the tip-off in tonight's Big Ten game after these messages. First day, my new boss throws me the keys. Get it fixed, kid. So I took it to Charlie. Guy's a real pro. Let's get the parts. Charlie says to be the best, you gotta use the best. All CarQuest parts are guaranteed, and there are more than 3,000 CarQuest stores with every part you can think of. Relax, it's done. Did you get the car fixed, kid? Um, yes, sir. Where'd you get the parts? CarQuest? Welcome to the pros, kid. It's time to find some sun. No time for work, just fun. So it's ATA again. Yeah, I'm ATA. You're on vacation. ATA's antifreeze fares from $49 get you out of the cold and into the sun. Call your travel agent or ATA today. On ATA, you're on vacation. It'll be a packed house tonight, over 6,800 here. And the students will stand the whole time. You'll see them in the background as Indiana tries to stop their road rolls with a victory over Penn State. There's Bruce Parkhill, the coach here, his 12th year at Penn State. And Bob Knight, you can see they're very good friends. Bruce was here at Indiana's practice to talk to Coach Knight a little earlier this morning. You see the Penn State team, they're not very deep. They go seven players deep. They've got a, a great substitute freshman, Pete Lasicki, 6'4". He comes in, a great outside shooter. You see lots of different defenses. The Big Ten official tonight, Ted Valentine, Art McDonald, and Randy Drury. Thought that was rather rude of you to ask Randy if he's going to stay for the whole game tonight. Well, he's, he started with us at Iowa, but he only made it through about the first 10 minutes. But he said he was going to try to give us a whole game tonight. Indiana's won all six meetings. They're 4-0 since Penn State has joined the Big Ten Conference. One of those, of course, that dramatic double overtime win here by Indiana two years ago when they were ranked number one in the nation. And we're set to go. Ted Valentine throws it, and Henderson controls the tap. Indiana's first possession. I think it's important for Indiana to get off to a quick start. Penn State in a man-to-man -man defense, laying off a little bit, forcing Hart to shoot. He takes a quick shot, but I at least like to see our guards looking to score. Lee comes away with it as Henderson taps it. So it looks like Penn State may drop off and force Indiana to take the outside shot. Hart was inside. Henderson's pass a little strong. And the first turnover of the game by Indiana. It's a good look. I think, as I was going to mention, I think it's good for Indiana to get off to a quick start because this crowd is really into the game. You need to get the crowd a little bit out of the game. And also, there's a lot of confidence as a, as a push off. We're going to call, call on Earl. Pushing off with his off arm. Right in front of the Indiana bench, there's Bruce Parkhill. As Neil Reed stayed right with Dan Earl. Earl and Reed are two similar type of players. Small point guards who like to run the offense. Earl, in fact, third in the Big Ten in assist. And they're matched up at the other end as well. You see, they're really laying off our guards. They obviously uh, saw the Illinois game where our guards really didn't look to shoot. You can see Patterson trying to use his quickness against Ameche as he will be able to. Still Indiana not getting shots 
bounce off the screen. This time Hart way outside. That's a three-pointer. And he looked down to make sure he's behind the line. If you're going to take one from back there, you just won't get behind the line. The most important for Indiana is that their guards are looking to shoot. The other night at Illinois, as we mentioned, they took seven shots all night. They've taken two already tonight. This is what a Meche likes to do. Post up on that block. Buddy gets called for the travel as Indiana double team. And that's what he'll do all night. He's not a guy that's going to turn and just just thunder his way to the basket. He's a guy that's going to get it down there, root around. He's going to use a lot of shot fakes. Good move by Brian Evans along the baseline. And Indiana's off to a 5-0 start. A baseline move. He likes that left side. And Indiana's jumped out to a 5-0 lead. Indiana's a team that does very well as, as long as they have a chance to score in, in the Big Ten. The problem is, as Secunda hits a three-pointer, is turnovers in the Big Ten. They turn it over on the road almost 20 times a game. Secunda from the outside, he had 23 against Ohio State. He's their leading scorer, and it gets hot right from the set on the outside. Indiana's offense much better tonight as far as spread early on in the game. There's much more room for cutting and screening inside as Henderson takes a jumper. Not exactly what Coach Knight's looking for from Allen Henderson. He wants him inside using his height and quickness. Good block out there as that rebound hits the floor before Penn State picks it up. Here's Earl. Tries to go into a Meche and a kick, so we get a reset on the 35-second clock. Earl's a guy that you, you you have to be aware of where he is. Last year at Illinois, he comes, he comes uh, in with 24 points. And he's a guy that he's not going to drive to the basket. He's not going to score a lot of points. But as soon as you lay off of him and start going down inside and helping off of Meche and some of the others, Teddy Valentine telling the crowd to move back, he's a guy that can step up and hit that jump shot if given just a little bit of time. There's Rashawn Carlton, number 15. He's got his career high against Indiana, 24 points. He always seems to have a good offensive night. So this is a powerful offensive team that Penn State has. Donovan shovels his feet. Third turnover now for Penn State. So it's the turnovers are about in Penn State instead of Indiana. That's, a, that's one of the main stats that we tried to focus a little bit on it tonight. But turnovers is always been one of the first stats Coach Knight always looked at. If you can keep your turnovers down, you can usually stay in the basketball game. They're going to give Hart that outside shot. He's two in a row from three-point land. There's no reason he can't step up and shoot that ball against Michigan State. He stepped up and hit like three or four shots in a row. He just needs a little confidence. We saw it earlier in the year against Evansville when he shot the basketball very well. He's a good shooter. He just needs a little confidence. Eight to three now, Indiana. Amache way outside. He doesn't mind that. He pulls up on a jumper. And Henderson pulls it down. He is a guy that will take the three-pointer if you back off of him, too, even at 6'10". Hart, you see Donovan pulls up a little bit closer on Hart. This time he drives. Henderson, good position. Rebound basket is good. Big, strong move by Allen Henderson, but probably most importantly, again, Steve Hart going to the basket creates a lot of openings for Indiana. First two for Henderson, a great start. Now 10-3 for Indiana. Just what you want to do when you're on the road. Jim Macy not really wanting to drive Andre Patterson. Patterson with more quickness inside. He's a guy who wants to get Patterson inside on his back and try to use him that way rather than drive him. Good pressure by Reed. He sticks right up behind him, AJ, with the steal. It's two on one. He sees Hart to his left. And now Steve slows it up. Good job by Indiana. They didn't really have nothing. Bad pass by Brian Evans. Well, it wasn't anything there. After a good pull out, they make a terrible play. Two turnovers, and Amiche beats everyone down the floor. A nice lob pass from Earl. Coach Knight not happy with the pass by Brian Evans. Indiana, we talk about turnovers. Once again, Indiana turns it over, turns into an easy two points for Penn State. Steve Hart was ready to take his next three-point shot, but Indiana called away from the ball on an offensive pick or three seconds. We'll check. Score is Indiana 10, Penn State 5, 15-54 left. We'll be back after these messages. Every morning when a GTE telephone customer picks up the phone, this is what they get. Every morning when they give someone a ring, this is how we... ...of the Big Ten Conference is prohibited. Indiana off to a quick start at 10-5, and it's been four early Penn State turnovers that have kept their scoring down. It was a three-second call on the other end, and so uh, while a lot of the Indiana fans think, well, we didn't throw out of bounds, three-second calls just as good as throwing it out of bounds. It turns into a turnover. Donovan goes 
into a Meche Patterson. Indiana's not going to back off the guards like they did against Kansas to stop the outside threat because Penn State guards are good shooters. So that puts a lot of pressure on Patterson and Henderson inside to stay with their man. Amici draws the foul. You cannot let him get an angle on you. He's big and strong and smart a player. As soon as he feels that angle, he's going to take it and then he's going to kind of lunge to the basket. Whether he makes the shot or not, he's a good shooter from the free throw line, although he missed that first one. But he's such a big body, once he gets an angle to the basket, you're going to do nothing but give him an easy two points or you're going to foul him. About 67%. He's a first team, all academic, all American. Great student. This is the free throw. And his three Indiana players go for it. They throw it out of bounds. It's good hustle, but you've got to talk to one another. You've got to communicate on the floor. Things like that. It, I mean, that again is just as good as another turnover. Danny Earl can hit that one. Or Secunda made a nice pick there on Reed that left Danny Earl open. Evans all the way down, and Williams there to try to defend, draws the foul. Good job by Andre Patterson. He could have easily looked Brian Evans off because there's not a big opening right there. You can see he was wide open. Finally, he got it to him, and nice job by Evans of getting the angle, taking it to the basket. You can see he gets fouled, gets hacked on the arm real good. Evans going to protect the ball. You can see he gets hacked real good right there, slapped him across the arm. He'll get a chance for two points. He'll cover from the left, uh, right side as he comes in, being a left handed player. Evans good on the free throw. So Indiana's lead is now six. Michael Herman into the game for Indiana. Neil Reed sits down. Expect the Indiana, those three guards, to rotate quite a bit to try to stop the outside shooting for Penn State. Anderson good on the second, Indiana now by seven. Michael Herman gonna have to be smart out there. I'm sure he feels like his quickness, he can take that ball away, but Danny Earl's smart. He's played against a lot of guys like Herman, he'll get him in foul trouble. Secunda outside misses, Henderson blocked off two Nittany lines to get that board. Evans thought about a three there. Left-handed spin dribble, he loses control, and out of bounds. Penn State has possession now, four turnovers for Indiana. Brian Evans trying to create some openings, but right so far he's just thrown it, thrown it away twice. Coach Knight not very happy with that result. We're past the first five minutes of this game. Indiana in good position. Got to take advantage. Got to go. Patterson tipped it away. Here's Hart. Finds Evans again on the right side. Squeezes through. Patterson rebounds. Gets it stripped away, and Brian Evans stepped on the line as he came in to get the ball. Evans has got to get that first shot in the bucket. Made a nice move down on the baseline. He only had a three or four footer. He's got to get that one up on the rim and get it in the basket. So both teams now having some trouble offensively. Look at the pressure. Michael Herman picks right up at the 10 second line. You can see the pressure makes him pick the ball up, makes the passing angles much more difficult and much diff more difficult to get into their offense. Secunda drove inside. He is a transfer from Syracuse. Played one year there and then sat out. There's Bruce Parkhill. His brother Barry played in the ABA, played for Virginia in college. Earl open on the out-of-bounds play, but passes up there. You see Meche on the block. So he got around him. Now, that's what they can't do right there. And that leaves Carlton open for the tip. Again, he got the quick angle. Andre Patterson going to have to get down in a defensive stance keep him in front of him. This crowd trying to get their team back in the game. Herman spins, really covered some ground in there. And Meche pulls it down. He's the Big Ten leading rebounder. A good play by Michael Herman getting to the basket. He needs to use his quickness against Danny Earl. There's no way that Earl can handle him inside. Foul on hard away from the action on Donovan Williams. Williams only scoring five points a game. First on Hart. Both teams now with two team fouls. Indiana's had some good scoring opportunities the last three times down the floor. They're not taking advantage of them, and Earl's going to hit that one right there. Oh, it's not going to go, and Brian Evans got up as high as a Meche that time to pull that ball down. Herman picks his dribble up right in the lane. He traveled. He got away with it. Henderson tries the lane. Boy, it's crowded in there. 
And again, a Meche with the board. Well, if it's that crowded in there, it's got to be open on the outside. Henderson going to have to learn to throw the ball back out. They're really looking to double team him when he gets the basketball. So comes a very quick on the baseline. Block from behind. Henderson recovers. And now it's three on two. Steve Hart was waiting for the three, but bobbled the ball. Lob to Henderson for the layup. Great pass by Brian Evans right there. He saw him the entire time, saw that Meche was out of position. Meche, a guy that's not looking to work real hard on the defensive end. I know that feeling. He, uh, he's wanting to get to the offensive end and try to score some points. Pretty good recognition there by Evans. And he executed well with that lob pass. First time he tried it, it got thrown away. Indiana now has doubled the score. They lead by seven. Carlton way outside is off. Henderson fights for it. Secunda comes away with it. The students want it to go Penn State's way, and the officials agree. And it should go Penn State's way. Poor block out by Allen Henderson. Indiana had three guys around that ball, and Secunda beat them to, beat him to it. Lindemann now in for Patterson. And this will probably be a lot of substituting between these two to switch off on a Meche. He's a guy who can wear you down in the course of a game. Again, Carlton looks for the shot. Again, confidently against Indiana. That time just nipped the rim. Indiana looking to get the ball up quickly. This is a Penn State team that likes to play in the 60s and 70s, as we mentioned. Henderson going to get a foul right there. He slapped him good. Hard again setting for that three-point, but Henderson Draws the foul. Here's the matchup with Ameche in the See, this is, I'm sure this guy is who uh, Ameche would like to play against. This way he'll bring it out on the floor and he'll try to drive to the basket again, get his angles and then lean into you, get to the foul line. Lindemann not as quick as an Andre Patterson. Pete Lasicki in the lineup now. He's a 6'4 freshman, terrific three point shooter, and that's why he's in the game, averaging 11. Although he doesn't start, he does play a lot and score. He's a guy that you're not going to help off of at all. you got to get through screens because they like to get him going. And a, an early three-pointer, I'm sure, would get him off the spot quick. Steve Hart draws that assignment. Secundas outside. Meche on the high post. Step out by Lindemann. And he draws the foul. And that's something Todd's got to watch. Not only does he have to prevent a Meche inside, but when the guards come off, he can pick up fouls, the foolish fouls, really, right there. Yeah, that, that's a bad foul. That's not what Indiana's looking for. We've got timeout, and we'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. When you play defense, you got to play defense with your feet. Get yourself in position or just back off. Just to reach in right there and create a foul like that, it's a bad foul, and, it, and it, it'll come back to haunt him later in the game. We talked about shooting percentage. Indiana well above what Penn State usually gives up at 42. And it's State who's struggling from the field. They miss another one. And now a foul inside. That goes on Michael Joseph, 6'10 senior. Just came in the lineup to give Meche a break. Also in is number 50, Phil Williams, 6'8 sophomore. Sweet P. Sweet P. Got it. Remember him from last year, takes up a lot of space inside. Evans for a three. That was off a pick by Lindemann. But Evans, not really a chance to get set. Boy, the better the pick, the more time that shooter has to get set. As we mentioned, this is not a great screening team right here. There's Joseph. He's working on Lindemann. Todd does a nice job to keep on his feet, but they go right back into Joseph. Not a lot there. He's going to take a bad shot. The big fills there for the rebound. Good job by Williams getting on the other side of the basket, feeling where the rebound's going to come off, and he got him an easy two points. 14 to 9, Indiana, 5-5. Five, five. Look at Phil Williams as Hart, er, Herman takes the three-pointer. Doesn't look a good fight by Indiana. Dan Earl comes away with it, and he gets it to Lasicki. So good hustle by State. Earl will take a three. And misses Brian Evans with the board. Indiana got out hustled to the ball that time. Back to my point about Phil Williams. A lot of people, I feel like, look at him and think he's not a basketball player, but the kid can play some basketball. He does a nice job of using his size inside. And he, he's a good rebounder. Averages almost five rebounds a game and almost five points a game off the bench. That foul goes on Williams. You can see he's really leaning on him hard. Henderson needs to use his quickness inside. You don't necessarily have to be out on the floor to use your quickness. 
get a big guy leaning on you inside, you can catch it, spin right around him. That's what Henderson needs to do with Phil Williams. 14 fouls for Penn State. Here's Henderson cutting the lane. And off on the shot, Joseph has the rebound. Got to get that ball in the bucket. That's nothing but a layup. I know that you got a guy leaning on you, but you got to get that one in. There's Sweet P. Williams. Soft shot is off. And weak side, Reed Williams went after it. And he missed the rebound. Henderson comes away with it. He's a guy you got to get a body on and get it on him about 10 feet from the basket. You get it on him two or three feet from the basket, it's not going to do any good. Evans the pass to Henderson, and he double pumped to get that shot away and not get it blocked. Six points for Henderson. Even though Evans hasn't scored, he's very active offensively. He's running the baseline. He's getting a couple screens. He got the shot earlier. He wasn't able to hit it, but he's had two great passes into Allen Henderson for easy basket. Great catch by Allen Henderson. Went up very strong. He'll read back in the game. So Kunda travels on the inside, so it's pretty good defensive pressure by Indiana. It's caused the sixth turnover now by Penn State. You can see a great pass right here. Evans goes up like he's going to shoot. Double pump and still throwing it down. Good move by Allen Henderson. Meche's back in the game as Indiana stretched its lead now to seven. Also Greg Bartram, number 22, 6'5 senior. He's played quite a bit previous years. Now he comes in off the bench. Indiana really needs to be confident down the floor, continue to work it. 50, that's going to go on Lindemann on an illegal screen. Evans is so wide open because Lindemann's still moving on the screen. And it's hard, hard to see it from our angle. Todd Lindemann saying that he, he was he was set. A lot of times that's as much the guy coming off the pick as it is the guy setting the screen. If the guy doesn't set his man up and come tight off the screen, the guy setting the screen ends, ends up getting the foul called as Todd Lindemann did right there. Charlie Miller in the lineup for the first time for Indiana. And the team scoring here in the last few minutes. Indiana's defensive pressure has picked up. Here's Lasicki, and that's what he's in the game to do. Didn't take him long to get that three-point shot away. He did nothing but come pop off that screen and go straight up. He didn't look for the defense or anything up. He, else, he's looking to score. Pat Knight in the lineup, 25. Charlie Miller drives baseline. Tough shot as he goes over a match and gets the roll. Miller with the baseline move. Charlie Miller should be one of the better players on this basketball team. He's a guy that just has not gained the confidence yet. They're going to call one more foul on Todd Lindemann. That'll be his third. They're calling for Neen inside. But uh, Charlie Miller just needs the confidence. He plays great in practice. He's not been able to take him from practice to the games. Maybe an early shot like that will kind of get him off the block. Coach Knight off the Indiana bench. It goes right to Patterson. Lindemann's going to have to come out. Earl tries a three-pointer, and Evans there for the board. Good block out by Brian Evans inside. You can see Indiana's offense much more spread out. There's much more room for Lindemann to move inside. Evans the shot fake. He gets around Williams. Tough shot there as he leans into the hoop. Williams really got cleared Lindemann out of there. Bartram has to pick it up way up top. Meche sweeping left-hander, and there's Bartram. That's what he's in there to do, provide some hustle. Meche again, goes right over Lindemann, and Lindemann picks his fourth up, and Meche gets the basket. Good position by Meche inside, but he bangs Lindemann real good. Lindemann has to learn to fall down and act as if takes the charge here. You can see they get it. Bartram beats everybody to a... A slow Indiana team. Now watch him bump Lindemann right here. Boom. Boom. That's when you got to fall down and take the charge. The official will give you that call just to stand there and bang with him. The offensive guy is going to get the call every time. And you're better off giving him a layup and not picking up your fourth foul because it's just two points. Now it's your fourth foul and a three-point play. Penn State is down by three. And this crowd into the game. see a real mismatch. Phil Williams going to have a heck of a time trying to guard Charlie Miller. Just can't even match up with him at all. I'm surprised that they haven't made some change right there because no way can Phil Williams guard Char Charlie Miller. 
Second on Williams, there's Lindemann on the bench with Michael Herman. We've got timeout, 7.57 left. Indiana leads at 18.15. We'll be back after these messages. Now watch him bump him right there. That's when you've got to fall down and act like you've just been run over by a big truck. And you're going to get that call once in a while. Penn State's bench has come in and scored five points to cut this Indiana lead down to three. Indiana possession, they go with Pat Knight, Neil Reed, Charlie Miller, Andre Patterson, and Alan Henderson inside. So a young, young lineup for Indiana caused by Lindemann picking up four first half foul. This is where Indiana really needs to be patient. Penn State feels like they want to get the ball back, they want to make a run. Make them play some defense, make them really get down, set some really good solid screens, make them fight over some screens, get yourself a good jump shot. So one four offense by Indiana, Patterson, Outside with a jumper, and that leaves Penn State in good rebounding position. They come away with it. Not a bad shot, but more of a one-on-one -on -one play. Just gets it and looks and shoots. Not what Coach Knight's really looking for. Donovan Williams jump shot. Look at Henderson. Sky for it. And has the board. Four on three by Indiana, but Reed slows it up. Long pass by Pat Knight. Cross court as Patterson cuts to the basket. The ball goes out of bounds. Seven turnovers for Indiana in the first 13 minutes of this game. Pat Knight looking for Andre Patterson to go up for the lob. Don't know that it was there. Evans and Hart check in. Pat Knight and Patterson come out. So both teams having trouble with early turnovers. A.J. posts up on Henderson. Ball goes to him, and Indiana surrounds him with three players. That left Secunda open outside for two. He's got five points. As soon as Ameche gets the ball on the post, Secunda always comes right up as Evans takes a three. Didn't get Way out there. In. Rebound to Lasicki. And fast break, quick shot, Secunda way off. And there's Bartram, his second offensive rebound. Indiana continues to get beat to the basketball. Henderson slapped it away as Ameche made that same strong move with his left hand. Inside pass, great by Neil Reed, and Henderson gets the left-hander for his eighth point. Good hands by Allen Henderson. Charlie Miller needs to get out of there. When you got Allen Henderson there on the block, you need to spread out. Good hands by Neil Reed. He needs to take that one all the way. Crossover dribble stolen. He goes to Charlie Miller right. as he felt Lasicki coming from behind. He fell hard, but it looks like he's jumping right up. That's a ball Neil Reed would usually take to the basket, but because, because of his shoulder, he's just a little bit slower to the basket. He can't get there. Good hands right there. See how he come, comes from up under to get that ball? He doesn't slap down. This is a ball he would usually take to the basket. I, I would still like to see him take it to the basket, but because of that right shoulder, it just, just hampers him enough that he can't get it up there. Dan Dockage and Neil Reed on the Indiana bench. Charlie Miller with two points as Indiana's lead is at three. into the Penn State student section. They're all there with white sweatshirts and blue and white pom-poms. you you got good concentration, though. I don't care how many people are standing there in the background. It really shouldn't bother you. You ought to be focused in on the rim, and you ought to be able to step up there and make those free throws. He's long on both of them. So still Indiana by three, Penn State. Danny Earl's going to have to be careful. He likes that crossover dribble, and Herman and Reed are both very quick with their hands as far as getting the ball. Meche moves, great block. That was Charlie Miller who dropped back in to block a Meche shot. Might have been Steve Hart. It was one of one of the two of them. I think Hart got in back inside. And like I said, Meche not a big. Oh, great pass in there. Behind the back by Evans. Back to Herman and Henderson, a chance for a three-point play. Great interior passing by Indiana. There's just not much room in there. We got about 10 guys standing in the blue area, in the free throw area. We're going to take a look at it here. Great pass here by Evans behind the back. And then good spin right there. And then F or Henderson, nice job of controlling his body, keeping the ball up where nobody can get to it, and he gets himself a 
chance at a three-point play. Not able to, that's three free throws in a row that Indiana's missed. Ten points and six rebounds for Henderson. So he's had a good first half. Indiana leads it by five. Comes it very quick. He's an excellent offensive player. Bruce Parkhill very pleased to have him, although he is a junior because of his transfer. A number of transfer kids here on this team. Ameche came from Vanderbilt. Secunda from Syracuse, as you mentioned. Ameche inside. One quick dribble. Give him seven points for tonight's game. No matter what side he's on, as Penn State goes to his zone, Indiana's got to recognize right away, get in positions, get in the openings, because that's, that's a zone that they're looking at. It's a matchup zone where you guard the man in your area and then stay with him until he moves on to the next area. That was Michael Herman with a short jump shot there as he got into the lane. This is the defense that really gave Michigan some problems. That's a shot Michael Herman can get almost at any time, and he's got to learn to take that. Because he's big, he's strong, he's quick. And when he has a chance, he's got to take it in there and take that shot. It opens things up for Indiana down inside when he looks for that shot. Indiana's been big on the boards tonight. They get another one there. Herman inside, double team, goes to Miller for the layup. Much better passing in tonight's game. As you can see when they get the ball down into Herman down in there, he's so big and he's so strong for his size. Guys like Earl, Bartram, those types of people, they can't handle him, and that's why he needs to take advantage of that. Good step out by Evans, and made Earl pick his dribble up. Now Bartram tries it outside. He passes to Meche, and he jams it. Looks like bad defense inside, but it's really bad defense outside. They let the guy, they're not able to contain as Penn State back in the zone once again. Evans that's answers with a three. It's off. Lasicki comes away with it. Meche still inside, goes up again on Henderson. He's made four in a row. Indiana just has to do a better job. He's, he is, he's not that quick. He is, he is 6'10", but Indiana's got to do a better job of letting him. They, right now, they're just giving him angles, and he's just getting right to the basket. And you know what that does for a guy's confidence? Once you make a couple in a row, you know you're unstoppable. Again, a nice pass. That was Evans and found Steve Hart. There's a lot of holes in the in the Penn State defense. Ameche, not, you know, he looks tired. That's why Indiana wants to try to get the ball up and down the floor as quickly as possible, but they're gonna have to do a better job defensively once he gets the basketball. Step out as Earl picks his dribble up. At least Bartram open for three. Steve Hart has the rebound. Herman a quick shot, nothing but net. It was one dribble to the left. As Indiana's offense picks up, Herman has four, and Indiana leads by seven. That one dribble seems to get him in a rhythm that he likes. The two times he's made that jump shot, he doesn't feel that rhythm the other way, but when he takes that dribble, it gives him a much better rhythm. Earl misses a Meche again, six points in a row for the big center. Indiana needs to go for bodies when they rebound rather than ball. They just went for the ball that time, and Amechi, a much bigger body, pushed his way in. Got an easy rebound and an easy two points. 13 points for Amechi. Penn State hands tough down five again, and Steve Hart inside. And for the guard, who's made two three-point shots outside, he picks up his second basket on the inside. Michael Herman playing with a lot of confidence right now and really playing terrific. Terrifically, he's just uh, making passes, he's making shots, he's doing everything, and that's the kind of player he's got to be for Indiana. 10 for Hart, and Meche at the other end, he's unstoppable right now. Well, Not necessarily what he's doing, but, but the mistakes Indiana's making on defense. Indiana ha has yet to make him shoot a turnaround five-footer. Each time they continue to let him get to the basket, there's no way that, that you're going to stop him. When he gets to the basket, Indiana needs to play good angles on him and make him shoot a turnaround 10-footer. Timeout. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. Defense Indiana's playing on him, other than none. You can see he's got the angle right here, and he just turns, leans, 
You've just got to get a body on him. Even if they're going to call some fouls, you've got to get a body on him. You just can't let him lean in there to the basket. He's got four rebounds to go along with his 15 points. It's been Henderson inside for Indiana, 10 points and seven rebounds. Indiana possession. Ryan Evans drags a foot and gets called for traveling. Eight turnovers for Indiana. And we, every time Indiana plays on the road, Ted, they've done a nice job from the field. They've outshot their opponent. They've done a nice job from the free throw line. It's the turnovers that hurt them. It's happening again here first half. Exactly. We mentioned averaging almost 21 turnovers a game on the road at home. Only about 14, and because of it, they're able to win games at home. State having a hard time finding the shot they want. An official's timeout now. Secunda, I think he caught an elbow in the eye when he went inside. It's like a contact lens came out. Shot clock's down to 13. And Secunda comes back to the Penn State bench. Looks like Penn State's having trouble with their offense. They've scored and they've gotten the ball inside of the big guy. But other than that, there really isn't a lot of motion and uh, to their offense. They do like to run the motion offense like Indiana. Exactly. They, uh, but still, their main focus is getting into a match. And as Coach mentioned in the opening, he's a guy that's a good passer. But tonight, he's not having to, to use any of his passing skills because Indiana's doing such a poor job down on the block against him. So we mentioned this recreation center the last year that it'll be here. They've got a 15,000 seat, $50 million arena that should be ready next year for the Big Ten season. And there you see how the rec hall would rank in Indiana against the high schools. 16th biggest gym in Indiana high schools. Of course, number three there, that's the Barney Scott Gymnasium in <laughs> Seymour, Indiana. One of the best father-in-laws there is out there. But that shows you the size of this place. But they do get loud. I'll say for 6,800. Oh. Very they are exciting. very loud here, and they want Penn State to pull this victory. They felt they got. If you, if you didn't know better, you'd think you were sitting in a Memorial Gym in Kokomo, Indiana, or at, in Anderson at, 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 at a regional or a sectional game because these fans are really into it. They're packed to the rafters. It's standing room only. They're standing around the top. You really got to like it. Penn State fans are great. They got rooked out of a national championship this year in football. I hope that comes off. All right, we're back. Secunda's back in the game with this contact problem fixed. Shot clock's down to 13. Dan Earl standing outside. They're going inside. Offensive Offense. foul, Earl with the offhand. That's the second time they called it right away on him tonight. Michael Herman with the defense, Bruce Parkhill. Trying to decide what to do, and that puts Indiana into the one and one. Let's we, see. Well, we thought at first they started walking to the line. No, Going to see him right here. Oh, that he definitely pushed off, and he pushed off. That's right in front of us. He did it in the, the first part of the game also. Michael Herman creates a lot of problems for Danny Earl inside. That night, the pass. Patterson with a jumper. Very hard for Pat to see Andre, but he got him the ball. Patterson's first two. Good pass by Pat Knight, good penetration. Good job by Patterson moving into the opening. The sicky outside is off. Herman has the board. Got to take it, got to take it into that defense. Four on three, but he slows it up. Partly because there's only 18 seconds left here first half. He wants Indiana to get that last shot. So you see the game clock, lower right. Could just spread it out, let Herman just go one on one. There's no way Danny Earl can handle him. Evans got hacked on the arm pretty good right there. He's going to be upset. The official acts like he didn't see it, but he got hacked on the arm. Bob Knight thought so too. He's off the bench, but the buzzer signifies the end of the first half and a pretty good for Indiana. They lead it 34 27. Bob Knight pleads his case, but the, the call remains the same. We'll be back with our halftime after these messages. You see Indiana shooting eight three-pointers in the first half. They're only two of eight, but it opens things up, gives the kids some, some confidence. Obviously, something Coach Knight's been working on. You can see Indiana being out. Indiana Hart leading the way with 11 points, came out, hit two three big three-pointers. Henderson 
10 points, doing a nice job. And Miller and Evans both with four. Charlie Miller off the bench. Nice job. Also Michael Herman. Bob Knight just now coming out from the Hoosier locker room. And same starting lineup. Back. Excuse me, lads. Same starting lineup other than Reed. Gonna, Michael Herman played very well in the first half. Going to get the start. Penn State in their first 12 games has led every game at halftime. This is the first time that Bruce Sparkhill has made his talk at half while his team has been down. We talked about possessions. Michael Herman comes out, makes a bad foul. There's just no need to start the, start the half off with a foul. Danny Earl way too smart for that. It's only his first. Bob Knight on the Indiana bench. Let's find out if Indiana realizes how important each possession is, if they take care of that basketball. Let's see what kind of second half they've got in, in them. But Meche inside, they really clear it out for him. You saw a nice wide angle shot there, but as he gets the ball, Indiana drops back in, but a foul. Well, the problem is, is they're giving up the position. You can't let him come across the lane. Once he comes across the lane and he gets right there, there's no way you're gonna stop him. You gotta get a body in front of him, make him knock you down if he's gonna try to come across that lane. He's not a guy that's gonna fight you and fight you and, and use his quickness to get around you because he's just not that quick. Two fouls for Henderson. Lindemann has four, so Indiana's gotta watch inside. Bob Knight's off the Indiana bench. He felt that he felt Donovan Williams was definitely in the lane. Just because he's getting two shots doesn't mean that you can go in the lane. Coach Knight not very happy with it. Penn State starts out in a man-to-man. -man. Michael Herman looking for Brian Evans, but Brian Evans never saw it. Threw it right out of bounds. And Indiana starts the half with a turnover. Ten now for the game. So Penn State gets the first two points on the free throws. They cut the lead to five, and they've got possession of the ball. Jay High likes to release the ball and then go inside and post. Here's Carlton, easy layup, it goes right down the lane. Carlton got away with the travel right there, but he did a nice job. Nobody picked him up, did a nice job taking it to the basket. He's one of Penn State's best athletes. Patterson brings a Meche out, that leaves Henderson with a much smaller Secunda inside, and Henderson picks up his 12th point. If Indiana just play some defense, there's going to be plenty of openings for Indiana to score against that Penn State defense. Right now, Indiana just can't stop Penn State on this end of the floor. That's a better job by Patterson that time, not letting the Meche get, get over and get position to the basketball. Dan Earl got away from Herman, but a blocked shot inside by Indiana prevents the layup. Herman's only one for seven in that first half from the field. They're going to back off. Michael Herman's got to step up and take that three-pointer. Danny Earl not looking to play him. Herman drives the lane. Shot is off Patterson there, but Donovan Williams comes away with it. Patterson had his hands on that ball, just couldn't get it. Right there, Patterson's got to take that position away. You can't let him get any farther down. Carlton, he's made two in a row. He loves to play against Indiana. We mentioned he had 24 against Indiana last year, his career high. Evans shot fake in the drive, and it gets him a jump shot. Brian Evans much more aggressive tonight, only one of seven in the first half. He's a guy that's not going to shoot that type of percentage. He's a guy that's going to make about 50% of what he shoots, so it's nice to see him looking for shots and getting in the offense. Six now for Evans. All five. Penn State players on the left side of the floor. The Evans fronting to Meche down inside. So a switch puts Evans up there. Herman is going to be called for the foul. Let's see. Henderson. They're going to call Henderson off the ball. I don't know exactly where that one came from. But uh, Teddy Valentine obviously saw something that we didn't. And that's a big call. That's three now on Henderson. He's picked up two fouls in the first two and a half minutes of this second half. Earl outside, a three-pointer in, and out and back in. He's just not a guy you can continue to leave open. Every out-of-bounds play, Indiana's given up easy three-pointers. He had missed two, in a, two already. He buried that one. Patterson, jump shot is in, and a foul on Secunda. Patterson, no hesitation there as he turns to the baseline. 
That's the type of play Coach Knight's looking to get from Andre Patterson. There's no reason for him to hesitate. He's as good athletically, he's as good a player as, as, as anybody in the league. And as we take a look at it, watch how he catches and he knows what he's going to do right away. A little shoulder fake goes down, he gets slapped on the wrist, takes it up strong, makes the shot. And on the other end of the floor, we continue to get caught up in screens. Danny Earl, you let him set, and he's going to bury you like he did that three-pointer. Look at Secunda right there for the rebound. And Casey missed. Now, hit Andre Patterson at the line. Converts on the three-point play. So it has been cut down to a two-point game. Now Indiana by five on the big play by Patterson. Indiana just needs to play some defense. Need to stay in good position, not give up that position. Interesting. Again, they clear the right side of the floor for Earl to drive one-on-one. Meche -on -one. keeps it alive. Only knocked out of bounds, and Indiana has possession. Nobody getting a body on a Meche, and even though he's not a big jumper, he's got long arms, and he tips the ball, and uh, Penn State able to come up with a number of loose balls. Had eight offensive rebounds in the first half. Whistle away from the ball. Donovan Williams holding on to Steve Hart. Bob Knight's been off the bench asking for that ball, and he got it. Bruce Parkhill also off his bench. Donovan Williams picks up the foul. It's his third. Still out of bounds now. Two team fouls on Penn State. So it'll be a while before Indiana gets to the line. Evans, shot fake and drive. Good pass to Brian Henderson. Take it back out. He's got plenty of time. Neil Reed, a three, is off. But Henderson fights for position, draws the foul, and gets the basket. Allen Henderson really doing the job right there. Nice job. Great hands inside. The ball's on the floor. He gets his hands on it. He's got good strength to come up with that basketball. I'm going to take a look at it. Neil Reed steps up, takes the three. He's missed his last 10 three-pointers. You can see Henderson gets it, rips it away, comes up with it, gets banged real good right there, and still able to get the ball in the basket. Wonderful body control. Big basket for Indiana by Allen Henderson. Now, Meche draws that foul. It's his second. He was not sure he was the one being called for it. Randy Drury with that whistle. Henderson off on the free throw. Indiana. Not getting to the line a lot in this ball game, and when they do, they're having trouble. They still lead by seven. Henderson's had a chance twice to convert three-point plays, missed both times. Charlie Miller went up and missed both of his, too, so uh, Indiana gonna have to concentrate a little better once they're at the free throw line. You can see they do a lot of screening. Steal by Henderson, it's Evans. He Good. takes it all the way in. Great, Danny Earl is going to get up behind him and slap it away, but nice job of getting the basketball and finding out what and who is around you. And he saw Danny Earl able to lay it up. Good play by Indiana on the defensive end. It turns into an easy basket. Williams in the lane. He gets the jumper. Steve Hart went for the steal. The ball got around him. Indiana down quickly. Four for Donovan Williams. Henderson, the pass. Got pushed. And he did push from behind. Crowd oh, Williams. Like, sorry, Laz. The crowd doesn't like it, but uh, he went up. Phil Williams gave him a big push in the back, Andre Patterson. 15-30 left in this game. Indiana leads it 45-38. We'll be back after these messages. Penn State, let's take a look at Indiana's defense. Creating some turnovers here. You can see Donovan Williams gets in. Really nothing to do. He thinks he's going to pass it. Right here is where I didn't feel like Evans knew where he was. And then he saw Earl right there. Nice job of protecting the basketball and getting it to the basket. Good defense creates easy baskets. Evans has four assists to go with his eight points. Indiana still holding that same lead they had to half. High shot. Oh, great tail. By Patterson. No. Ted Valentine's going to call that off for offensive goaltending right in front of Bob Knight. He that's, disagrees with that call. That's a bad call because that ball came off the rim. Andre Patterson waited and waited. If anybody was up in the rim, it was the Penn State player got his hand up in the rim. Great tip in by Andre Patterson, taken away. Penn State has it going the other way, and they finally go to a Meche inside. Henderson with the block, and Indiana has it. 
Good recognition by Neil Reed, seeing Danny Earl, who was waiting for him right there. Great help by Alan Henderson inside. Henderson and Patterson exchange passes. Whistle, let's watch the goal tent. Take a look at it. You can see Patterson has nobody blocks him out. He waits and he waits and he waits. Finally, that ball's that, that, that ball's way off the rim. No way is that ball still around the cylinder. Foul on Dan Earl. That's his third. Now a technical foul on Bob Knight as Ted Valentine took his position right in front of the Indiana bench. And a technical foul called on Indiana. Well, the Indiana folks have seen that before. They saw it in Minneapolis in the Final Four of the one year when Teddy Valentine teed the Indiana bench up for, you know, nobody has yet to realize what, what he teed that up for. But uh, Coach Knight obviously upset with the goaltend, as he should be. Dan Earl goes to the line. He'll get two free throws. He's an 85% free throw shooter. And misses the first. Good on the second. Penn State will get the ball at half court. So Indiana loses possession of the ball because the foul on Earl would have given them the out of bounds. The lead is six. And Meche still fighting inside. Henderson drops back to help. Lasicki. On the line, it's two-point shot. He has five points, and it's a four-point lead for Indiana. Well, you knew at some point in time Penn State was going to make a run, and this is where Indiana had not been very good, not being able to pull the basketball out, spread the offense, and get a good shot. Evans gets fouled down inside. A critical part in the Illinois game Saturday was with about 11 minutes to go. Indiana had a two-point lead. Illinois ran off 14 straight points. And tonight, Indiana's had a comfortable lead between four and seven points. Now it's cut to four. And Indiana can see if they've learned from Saturday's game against Illinois. A foul before the inbounds pass. That's on Lasicki. And Indiana in the one and one already early in the second half. Still 14 and a half minutes left in this game. I think there are a lot of times when you might see Coach Knight Trying, not, not actually trying to get a technical, but feels maybe he's deserving of one. I, I think he was very, very surprised when Ted Valentine teed him up because he knew that it, his team had the possession, and he obviously didn't want to give that up. He was very surprised when he got teed up right there. One and one is missed by Steve Hart. So Indiana struggles at the foul line, and this Penn State crowd feels their team can get closer right here. defense has really prevented that. The double team and a major inside. Penn State's having trouble with the offense because of it. Well, Phil Williams is not the guy they want out there right now. And Secunda answers from three-point range. Eight points for Secunda. It's a one-point game. And the this first, is excuse me, in the first half, Indiana was not helping back in, and that's the problem it creates when you start helping back in. Three by Neil Reed is off. Fight for the rebound. Out of bounds to Penn State. Indiana only with a one-point lead. And the, the thing to watch Indiana offensively is their offense gets tighter to the lane when teams start making a run at them. They don't stay as spread. And because of it, they don't get as many good shots. Although Neil Reed got a very good look at a three-pointer right there. Michael Herman and Charlie Miller check in. Reed comes out. This is as close as this game has been since it was five to three. Indiana's led all the way. This is as loud as the crowd has been since this game started. A basket here gives Penn State the lead. They try to have Meche, and it's stolen. Steve Hart sneaks right in front and takes that pass away. Indiana needs to stay spread here, get a good shot. There'll be plenty of opportunities if you just take your time in there. Henderson moving on a Meche. What a move as he got around a Meche and still got the shot to go. 16 for Henderson. Great lean. Good shot by Allen Henderson. You like to see him take it down inside. He can play from the outside, but at this point in the game, 
need to see him go down inside, try to draw fouls. Ameche gets that shot away, but he was fouled, and Phil Williams comes up limping. Looks like he sprained an ankle. Both well, Henderson and Patterson were there. Let's see that foul goes on Patterson, his second. Going to see Amici here. He's not a guy that makes a lot of quick moves. He just kind of wallers around down inside. And you can see nobody helped right there. No communication. Steps up to the line. Penn State back to within two. 18.7 rebounds for Amici. Carlton comes in for Williams. Bill Williams, a guy, he hurt his knee in early, around December 10th, and he's had some problems with it. And it looks like he re-aggravated that knee a little bit, and he wanted Coach Parkhill to get him out of there. Carlton cut in front of Amache as he's receiving the ball. The officials reset the lane. Amache is good on the second. One point ball game, we got 12 and a half minutes still to go. A lot of time. Henderson, a hold on Secunda as Henderson faked left and came back to the right. And Henderson's gonna go to the line. Bruce Parkhill looks on. Eighth team foul now on the Nittany Lions. Once you get the opportunity to get in the one and one as Indiana did there with 14 and a half minutes, then you want to take advantage of it, start driving people to the basket and getting to the free throw line as often as possible, obviously hoping to make the free throws when you do get there. That's two one and ones in a row Indiana's missed. 12.34 left. Penn State keeps hanging in there. Three point shot. Lasicki is off. Sekunda took it right away from Patterson and laid it in. Penn State's first lead of the game, traveling on Michael Herman. Michael Herman wanting to make something happen, but there's just not anything there. Coach, Coach Knight was going to call a timeout, and he looked up real quick. You can see Secunda just takes the ball away. Patterson had wonderful position. Secunda just came in and ripped it away from him. Coach was going to call a timeout, but he looked up and saw there was only 15 seconds till the next TV timeout, so he decided not to. Crowd quiets as Penn State works on offense. Really spread out with Amiche inside and four players out. Lasicki for three. It's off. Michael Herman has the board. Down quickly. Earl really playing off of Herman. He goes to Patterson. Jumper is off. Good block out by Carlton. Michael Herman's got to look for that shot right inside the lane. They're giving him about an 18-footer. He hit two of them early in the game, and he hadn't looked for one yet since. Carlton finds a shot somehow in there and gives Penn State a three-point lead now. It's his eighth point of the game. Yeah, we talked about the Illinois game, how we continued to go one-on-one -on -one rather than working the ball around. Didn't know what to look for. We're gonna call a sicky guarding Steve Hart right there. But the last two or three times down, Indiana very quick into their offense, and they're not getting the ball down inside, not working it around, not staying spread because if they end up in a one-on-one -on -one situation, end up in a bad shot. That puts Indiana at the line. Since the technical, Indiana has been outscored by Penn State 11 to two. Steve Hart goes to the line of Meche with a question or a signal to his teammates. Hart got all 10 of his points in the first half and he's at the line. There's another $25 to Gleaners from Noble Romans Pizza. Within 25 minutes after placing your delivery order, Noble Romans will call to let you know your pizza is on its way or it's free. Hard is good on both. We've got timeout. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. State fans, they've been standing the whole game now, have something to cheer about. And Penn State's been doing it on the board. They've out-rebounded Indiana. 
27-21. Can mention the 10th leading rebounding team in the Big Ten. Lasicki outside for three, and that is a guy that cannot come off of. Coach just put Patrick in the game, and uh, I think Patrick was guarding Lasicki, able to slide by. Tough passing angle for Michael Herman right there. Secunda able to come up with it in Penn State on a 13-2 run right now. The 14, excuse me, the three-pointer. They lead by four. They go to a Meche inside, spins. He misses the shot, put a foul on Patterson. It's an interesting offense. They either go to a Meche inside or they're looking for the outside shot. Patterson's third foul. So Henderson and Patterson have three. Lindemann has four. And Meche, his numbers keep growing. He's the guy that I uh, keep, keep pounding on the same issue. But if, if you let him get position inside, you, you're just not going to stop him. He's too big. He's too broad. He knows how to use his body. He's a smart kid. He's an academic All-American. And he's going to find some way to get it in the basket or get it to the lane get to the free throw line. And, uh, right now, he's taking them to a 55-49 lead. He's been seven of nine from that line. Nobody back for Indiana to bring the ball in. Pat Knight finally does and gets it back to Herman. Michael Herman outside for three. Big shot there as Herman takes a quick three. I don't know why he's waited so long to step up. He's had a you know, an 18, 20 footer from the top of the key. Danny Earl's been backing off. I mean, that time, Lasicki was on him. He still stepped right up there. He's hit three. Seven points for Herman. All three Indiana players surround Meche, and that foul goes on Patterson, and that's his four. So two quick fouls there by Patterson in less than a minute. It's four on Patterson. Lindemann played five minutes in the first half, and he's got four. And they've got six. Ameche goes up strong, and he's fouled again. Indiana's been very, very poor on the out-of-bounds plays tonight. You remember Danny Earls had a number of three-point looks, wide-open three-point looks right there. And he's that foul goes on Henderson. Now he's got four. No communication once again. They just throw it straight in five feet to Amici. He catches and goes to the basket. Indiana hammers him. There are three big guys, Henderson, Lindemann, and Andre Patterson, all with four fouls. And we've still got 10 minutes left in this basketball game. And Amici keeps knocking him down from the free throw line. And if you don't think Penn State's going to bring it down and keep pounding it inside to Ameche with all those guys in foul trouble, you're deadly wrong because they'll continue to bring it down inside and they're going to continue to give it to him. He's made four straight free throws as Penn State builds the lead to five. Look how tight Indiana's offense. We've got almost ten guys in that lane right there. Carlton picks that foul up his second. He wanted a hook there on Evans. Let's watch. Don't get a good angle right here, but a good in pass by Michael Herman. And he's probably got a good complaint right there. Brian Evans uses that left arm and hooks him really good. Carlton very upset. Evans will get, get a couple chances at a free throw. As Indiana has they fouled Indiana 10 times now, so from now on, Indiana will shoot two. Lindemann comes in, and Patterson sits down with those two quick fouls. Evans good on its third straight free throw. There's another $25 to Gleaners from Noble Romans. The better pizza people. Noble Romans Sicilian pizza is baked in olive oil from scratch daily. Taste the difference at Noble Romans. Two for Evans and the lead down to three now. So Indiana, just like Illinois, a short spurt there where the opponent took control of the game, but still plenty of time for Indiana to come back. They go to Amici. Layup. He drives in, and Lindemann's picked up his fifth foul. Just in the ball game, the first time down the floor, they go to Ameche. He throws to his left and draws the foul on Lindemann. Well, as we mentioned, he only played five minutes in the first half. He got in there for about 15, 20 seconds. And as we mentioned last time down, they're going to throw it to him all night. They're going to fire it in there to Ameche. MHA, especially now with everybody in foul troubles, Coach Knight bringing a new body in there with no fouls. Robbie Ager's coming into the game, and he'll give it a, give it a shot, see if he can guard him. 
Eggers number 32 in. Lindemann fouls out the 944 mark. And you're right, Ted. Expect Penn State to go to a Meche again. He's back on the line, and he's been deadly there tonight. You've got to meet him at the free throw line when he comes down to set up in the offense. You've got to meet him outside the three-point line, up at the free throw line, and you've got to fight him all the way down. You can't just let him walk down to the baseline and then start moving around for position. If you do that, you're going to end up with all the fouls that we've, we've got already. He finally misses, now 10 of 13 from that line. Ben, it's Penn State by four. Robbie Eggers is a guy that needs to be looking for bodies inside. He's not a guy that we want handling the ball a lot. Not shooting the basketball, he's got to be getting people open inside. You see Penn State's defense is really hugging that three-second lane. Eggers on a turning jump shot is off. Dan Earl with the board. I think Penn State's going to give that. You can see Eggers pushing. They're going to get him for a foul if he don't watch it. He's Mace pushing hard. Matched up with Eggers now. Doing a better job of not letting him position himself where he wants to. The back screen that Lasicki tried to set with a Meche. Michael Herman goes for the steal and draws the foul. Lasicki's man has to step in there and not let him set that screen. You've got to get between he and a Meche, and you can't let him set that screen. That, that, that will mess everything up right there. If you just let him step right in there and set that screen, then Robbie Eggers, Todd Lindemann, Henderson, nobody really has a chance because then a Meche gets right down there where he wants to be. Nothing you can do. Danny Earl, an excellent free throw shooter. This is there. Got him. Got him one and one. He's missed two this game. See if Indiana's offense is able to spread. Look how there's eight guys in that lane. There's no spread to the offense at all. Double team Henderson to move. No foul. And a Meche comes away with the board. Got a good look. Carlton in the corner. He goes to Secunda. Turn, jump hook is off. And it's Secunda with the foul as he tries to go over Henderson for the rebound. You can see they're really going to go with Henderson. Coaches move Henderson over to Secunda right now. To Bruce Parkhill, no matter who Henderson is guarding, they're going to put him down on the block. They're going to play, make Allen Henderson play defense. Either that or Allen Henderson's going to have to give up some easy baskets. So look at Henderson. He had a great first half and now trying to get on track offensively. We got plenty of time, 8.32, Indiana down by four. There's another $25 to Gleaner's Food Bank from the Better Pizza People. Noble Romans has a new personal stuffed pizza called the Pizza Bomb. Try one for lunch soon. Henderson had missed his first three free throw attempts. He's off on this one, so he's one of five on the game. Indiana trails by three. Simple offense for Penn State. Get the ball to a Meche inside, and they do. And a foul. This one on Brian Evans. No secrets here. First foul on Evans. Let's watch a Meche inside. Okay, see Indiana gets messed up. And see how we let him move right down there where he wants to. We never put a body on him. And now you're in trouble, because now he starts backing in, backing in. Uses his body, leans up, he gets a three or four footer, and slap him, and he goes to the free throw line. When he gets the ball that close, there's no reason for a dribble, so the guards can't help by coming back in, and he's going to overpower. That was a switch that time as Eggers got picked, and Evans had to pick him up. That's why you got to bang him and not let him get there. Throw him off his cuts. Also, you're going to make him tired when you make him work that much harder. See, he likes this. Now the game's a free throw shooting contest. The game has slowed down, and he's not near as tired as he was earlier in the game. He gets one of two. Just over eight minutes left. Second half, good drive by Herman. Goes all the way, shot is off. It comes away. Indiana watches it, and Penn State knocked it out. Michael Herman, nice drive along the lane, but I continue to pound the point. There's just no room down in there. there we got all the IU guys are standing right along the lane. There's no spread to their offense, and there's no room to drive the lane. You can see how close the students are. They've got to push them back on that first row to give Indiana room to bring the ball in. Another whistle. Second half action. Seconda, they're going to get. Officials that on Seconda now his four. So, Penn State starts to get into foul trouble. Both teams 
with 10 team fouls over the limit. Game has really slowed down. It was going at a very quick pace. Really slowed down about the last four or five minutes. There's another $25 to Gleaners from Noble Roman's Pizza. Did you know Noble Roman puts 90 pepperonis on their party-sized pepperoni pizza? Count your pepperonis today. Michael Joseph in the lineup. Secunda has to leave with four fouls. There he is, 6'10", senior. Joseph doesn't bring the three-point punch in that uh, Secunda leaves with. Secunda and Liskey or Lisicki, excuse me, it makes it very difficult playing defense when you got a big guy inside like a Meiji and you got Secunda and Lisicki outside that can pop the three. So their offense not quite as strong when Secunda has to go to the bench. Evans cuts the lead to two. 7.57 left, Penn State 59 to 57 over Indiana. We'll be back after these messages. Penn State, the uh, Recreation Hall. And this place is really building up for a final eight minutes, seven minutes and 57 seconds to be exact. And they're hoping their Penn State and Nittany Lions can come through. Indiana has hung tough. Remember in Illinois, they got, Illinois got the lead. Indiana was really out of the game. But as Penn State has gotten the lead, Indiana has hung tough. And now let's see if they can get over the hump. Both teams now with 10 fouls each. Both teams will be shooting two, two when they get to the free throw line. Carlton inside, rebounded by Evans. He made a nice move, but caught himself right under the basket. Nowhere to go. Evans got a hand on that, just a little, just enough to throw it off. All right, Indiana needs a good offensive set. They go to Henderson, dribbles in the lane, and draws the foul. Joseph didn't foul him a lot, but he did come over his back. And as, and as picky as it, pick, picky as they've been tonight, that's probably one you, you're just not going to get away with. You can see Henderson come down. This is the position that Teddy Valentine's looking at, and it looks like that you know from that position that he does foul him. Henderson now one of six. Evans did a nice job by holding his position, and Meche could not come over to help block that shot. Henderson good on the second. So Indiana now trails by only one. See what they can stop. A Meche at the other end. Evans tries to draw a foul and goes down. No call. A Meche double team goes to Joseph. And a foul inside on Evans. Brian Evans, good foul. You're going to have to make Joseph earn those as a Meche did a nice job of stepping out that time. Makes an excellent pass inside. Eggers doing a nice job, but CMH, he feels the pressure. Nice pass right there. Sees the defense. Evans bangs him in the back and then slaps him on the top. That's two fouls on Evans for people wondering at home. Joseph only one of two from the line this year, so not a familiar place for him. He good, gets it. Good concentration right there by Joseph. You can see he took a little extra time, but the extra time paid off. Talked about Penn State being a good defensive team, only 36%. Indiana's now at 48% from the field. So they're getting it done there. They're scoring some points. Right now they trail by three as Joseph hits both. Penn State's at 60% offensively, 9 of 15 here in the second half. So deadly shooting. Bad shot. Shot in the lead. Henderson off. And a Meche pulls it down. He's having a big game. Defense now by Indiana. Allen, I know, wants to be the leader and wants to take control in, in important times, but he needs to give the offense a chance to get something out of it. That time, there just wasn't anything there. Michael Herman, great rebound right there. Big difference. A Meche got the ball and had to take a dribble. Fast break, Indiana. Layup by Henderson. Nice job by Michael Herman to find Henderson. There's a difference right there. Last time, he's taken a 15, 15, 18-footer with a lot of pressure. That time, he's taken about a four-footer off the glass. Nice job by Herman to get the ball where it needs to be. Lasicki outside for three is off. Long rebound is Carlton. New shot clock. Earl takes the three, and he gets it. Danny Earl's not going to miss those, as we mentioned in the first half. He does need some time. But as we mentioned, last year in Illinois, they left him open, and he ended up with 24. It's a second three-point shot, a foul uh, by Carlton on Check that. Maybe on Joseph. 
And it is. It's on Michael Joseph. Bruce Parkhill makes a substitution. Let's watch the three by Earl. That looks good, looks like good offense, but the main problem here for Indiana is Danny Earl strokes it right through. Nice three. Brian Evans missed the block out on Carlton. They had already taken one shot. If they got a body on Carlton, Indiana comes away with the rebound. No three-pointer, but when you don't do all the fundamentals, you get hurt, especially at important times in the game. That's what it's short on both free throws. Meche pulls it down, a four-point lead for Penn State, just under six minutes left. Things like that, when you miss that block out and you end up with three, that's what Coach is talking about when he talks about how important each possession is, because they ended up with two possessions rather than just the one. The one we stopped them on, Indiana should have had the rebound. Instead, they got a three-point. Meche calls for the ball, gets it. Second time, we always look for Joseph. Shot clock's at eight. Earl does a nice job of running that offense. Herman able to knock it away right there, but he's very calm. Great defense by Indiana, gives them the fast break. And Evans on that left side takes it all the way to the hole. Indiana continuing to run the floor. Even though the game has slowed because of the free throws, Indiana, whenever they get a chance, you can see Danny Earl tries to go inside. Herman just uses his athletic ability. This was a pass, not a shot. Knocks it away, great hands to come away with it, and then he rushes it up the floor, and Evans goes inside and gets fouled. There's another $25 to Gleaners from Noble Roman's Pizza. And don't forget, the better pizza people deliver both lunch and dinner. Give them a call today. Evans now 10 points in this second half. Give him 14 for the game, so he's picked up the offense for Indiana. Two-point game. Another defensive stand by the Hoosiers. Give Robbie Eggers some credit. He's done a nice job on Amechi. He's put a body on him, and Amechi's moved outside a little bit. Inside to Joseph. He's trying to move on Henderson. Wild shot. Eggers has the board. Robbie Eggers got a body on Amechi that time. Made it very difficult. Great pass inside by Michael Herman. Saw it all the way. He looked to the left to throw Penn State off, and Henderson snuck down below, 22 points. Tie game, and Indiana is right in it with just under five minutes to go. Michael Herman's got to learn that he can play like that at all times. He's such a great athlete. Sicky down to Meche. Inside for the shot. Allen Henderson got switched off on him. There was no way Allen was going to bang with him and get his fifth foul, so he made a decision of just letting this can move around him for an easy layup. Good play by Penn State taking it at Allen Henderson. 27 now for Meche. Michael Herman outside. It's off. Meche boards. He's feeling confident with that shot as he stepped up for the three. A good shot. It's a shot that he has to take. If Indiana's going to become a better basketball team, whether it be on the road or as they look ahead, Michael Herman's got to be a big, important part of it, and he's got to learn to take that jump shot when it's available. Double team, Eggers, a Meche, a reverse layup is off. Four Indiana guys stood there and watched Bartram. That's about the third time tonight Bartram has come up with a loose ball or a rebound. Take a look at the defense inside. You can see Indiana pretty much surrounds Amechi. There's no way you can let him go around you on the baseline. Bad shot, but look, four guys, four Indiana guys standing there. Nobody goes after the ball. Bartram goes after it. It's about the third time, and once again, Coach Knight talking about each possession, how important it is. Indiana gets beat on the offensive board once again. Bartram off on that free throw. And Ted, this is a game where those free throws are so important. It's two free throws each time a foul is made now for each team. Bartram good on the second. And we've got timeout. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. A good pass by Michael Herman. He saw him from the time he was 20 feet away from the basket. And as soon as he cleared, as soon as he came open, here we see the coach of the Penn State Nittany Lions football team, Joe Paterno, as I mentioned earlier. Would have liked to have seen a showdown between they and Nebraska earlier 
around the first of the year. Penn State awfully good. Great football team this year. Really powerful offensively. Steve Hart tries to post inside. Here's Egger. Shot clock's down to 12. As far as it's been down for Indiana this game. Down to six. Hart realizes it, brings it back out. It's a three. Evans. No, that's all. Oh, just off as he fell short. Eggers tries for the rebound. Out of bounds to Penn State. Good hustle by Robbie Eggers. He got a hand on it. He just couldn't quite come up with it. Indiana, not very good clock management right there. They were very aware of what was going on. They knew how much time Steve Hart has to use his athletic ability and get himself a shot right there. Three minutes left. Penn State by three points. It's the high pick. It's still Eggers on a Maychek. Penn State back with Secunda, who also with four fouls. He'll pop it. He's off there. Rebound. Indiana. Penn State tipped it out. Neil Reed checks in for Indiana. Comes in for Steve Hart. Free throws have been the story of this second half. Indiana's 11 of 18, but Penn State 14 of 19. Indiana guards are going to have to be ready to take the shot if it's available. Henderson all the way, layup is off. Long rebound, and Herman comes away with it. Oh, and Henderson got, he didn't know whether to dunk that one or lay it in. He tried to lay it in. That's a good call right there. Ameche, Ameche didn't, didn't really have good position. He just went over and kind of took the legs out of Robbie Eggers as he went after that basketball. Let's watch. You can see he's all the way over here. Now he finds him, and you can see he, he was real late in getting to him, and, uh, and Big John didn't have that didn't say much about it, so I think he was very aware that he fouled him. It's the advantage of that inside official because if you're from the outside and see that late, it looks like Eggers comes over the top. Bobby Eggers just needs to take his time to just shoot that ball up in the air a little bit. That one was pretty much on the line. Henderson had a great opportunity to get IU back to within one. He got, him, got himself in a position, he didn't know whether to dunk it or lay it in, and he just kind of laid it into the rim right there. Both spin out. Penn State by three. He approached the two-minute mark. Lasicki comes firing off that. Michael Herman, the big steal in the layup. It's good. He reached right in on Lasicki and took the ball away. Big basket for Indiana. Penn State now by one, 153 left. Michael Herman, his athletic ability comes through again. His quick hands, he's got to make things happen. Penn State, State runs some time now. 140 left in the game. 18 on the shot clock. And Earl outside, there's shot clock, lower left. Neil Reed has got to play position right here. You can't let him drive around you and then dish it off for a three-pointer or a dunk to a Meche. Four seconds, fall away, jumper is off. Henderson, big rebound, so the defense stops Penn State. 116 left, Indiana trails by one. Evans, baseline is good. They're not but gonna the give foul, it to him. Foul Maybe. before the shot. Evans goes to the line. Indiana playing some good ball in this last two minutes. Good to see Brian Evans with an aggressive mood, looking to go to the basket rather than waiting for something to happen. He's going to make it happen. Penn State calls timeout. 112 left. The Nittany Lions a lead by one. We'll be back after these messages. Good positioning, not letting Danny Earl drive and dish. Now they find themselves in a tough position. They get it down to Ameche. He doesn't have time to take it to the basket. Shoots a fall away. Good block out. Look at Henderson. Blocks out. Great job. Three Indiana guys around the basketball. Good defensive possession by Indiana right there. Henderson said, uh, Brian Evans has had a great second half, as well as Henderson, but it's Evans going to be at the line now with some big free throws, and he'll have two. He's good on the first. Very comfortable there. Nine of 11 now. Good concentration. Able to knock both of them down. Didn't touch rim with either one of those. Two big free throws. Indiana has the first lead in a long time. It's by one. Just over a minute left. 
Clock's going to go down to a minute. They've got to continue to keep a body on a Meche. Danny Earl almost lost his footing right there. Picks the dribble up. Not a lot to do for Penn State. Shot clock down to 10. They'll still look for a Meche. Down to five. Shot is off. It doesn't hit anything, so it's a violation. The Both three times points. now, Penn State's tried to take time off the clock. And it hasn't worked as they've gotten some bad shots. Patterson wants to check in for Indiana. There's only a 1.8 difference between the shot clock and the actual clock. So Indiana obviously going to want to work time off. Penn State will probably work defensively very tough. Try to get a steal. If they can't, then they'll probably foul with 10 or 15 seconds left. They go to full court pressure. Herman brings it all the way in. All the way in is a layup. Herman doesn't stop, and Indiana leads it by three. That's a good play by Michael Herman. If they're going to give you the layup, you've got to take it. Penn State looking for a timeout. And they get it. 24.6 seconds left. Indiana leads it by three. We'll be back after these messages. This team is done here in the last two minutes of this ball game. Coach Knight really didn't even get into the huddle that time. He sat and he talked a little bit. One of the assistants got down in front. I think he's going to have Evans call another timeout. He wants to take some time. Obviously, this is a most important game. I'm sure that Penn State is going to be looking for Lasicki or Secunda. Don't leave us now. We'll be back after these messages. Back in the game for Indiana. They lead it by three at the 346 mark. Penn State led 67 64. So Indiana's held them scoreless now for the last 322. And in the meantime, they've scored six straight points. They've gotten to 70. Only the second team to do that in Penn State. A three pointer is needed here to and send be this looking, game to overtime. You can see they'll be screening down on Lasicki and Secunda. Also, you've got to watch Dan Early fouling from three point range. A foul on He'll Neil get, Reed. He'll get three free throws for Dan Earl. Three shots when you're fouled behind the three-point line. 15.2 seconds left in the game. I would think that would be the guy Indiana would want shooting it. You can see he got his hand in there. He hacked him, no doubt about it. He's behind the line. He's a wonderful free throw shooter, as we mentioned earlier. And he'll get three to try to tie this game up with 15.2 seconds still left. This is what pressure's all about in college basketball. He's good on the first. He struggled, only one of three, now two of four. Indiana will still have 15.2 seconds. Good on the second. Boy, that's confidence right there. Yeah, he knows there's a lot of, a lot of people here who want to beat IU. He's Indiana's done a nice gonna job. call timeout. Still one free throw by Earl. Bob Knight calls the timeout. They make a substitution. Nate Oldhouse in the game 31. But Ted, what do you think about Indiana? The last 346, they've really played great. It, you know, they've come together very, very well. I think Coach Knight right here with this timeout. Obviously, when you shoot free throws, you get into a rhythm. It looked like he was in a good, solid rhythm right there. And those two, so Coach trying to throw him off that rhythm a little bit, make him step back up there, give him a little time to think about it. But Indiana's still in a pretty good position as far as even if they tie the game, Indiana should get the last shot, have an opportunity to win the basketball game. Indiana's played very, very well down the end. Two important players have been Robbie Eggers, who has been extremely big on the defensive end and rebounding, and Michael Herman has really come alive, made some huge plays. He knocked that ball away for an easy layup and went to the basket the last time down. The executive. There's Bob Knight diagramming a play. May see how they line up and then may even call another timeout. 15 seconds, a long time. But right now, Dan Earl has one more free throw. Expect Penn State to foul if he misses this to send Indiana to the line. And they'll be back on defense to try to stop Indiana and go to overtime. Indiana's got to be on their toes because you can't go out there expecting him to make it. And then all of a sudden he miss and they get the rebound and then they have an opportunity to win. You have to be on your toes and you have to expect that he's going to miss this. And if he does, then you've got to get the rebound. Look for full court pressure by Penn State. 
If it does go in, here it is. He's short. Evans comes away with the board. Evans going to keep it in his hand. Good play by Brian Evans. Good free throw shooter. Good play. Make him foul me. I want to go to the line. I want to shoot the free throws. That's the kind of leadership I like to see from an older guy out there. There's Dan Earl. He misses, so that timeout, very timely. It made Dan Earl think about that next free throw. Broke his rhythm a little bit. There you see him shake his head. And he fell short. Steve Hart in the lineup. These, these free throws, obviously, as all of them are, are very important. But Penn State, even if he makes these two, still has an opportunity to tie with a three-pointer. If he misses either one of them, Penn State will have opportunities to tie it two and even win with the three-pointer. Brian Evans. Great concentration. That's terrific. It's very loud, and he's got a job to do. He's 11 of 13 from the line. It'll be interesting to see if, if he makes this. It's off. Indiana Ten got to find everybody defensively. Carlton in the corner, three seconds, jump shot is off, and that's going to do it at the horn. Indiana. Indiana has won it by two points. Brian Evans and Dan Dockage hug at midcourt. Bruce Parkhill and Bob Knight. The executive producer for Raycom Sports is Peter Rawls. The senior coordinating producer, Johnny Tyus. The telecast of tonight's game has been produced by Peter O'Brien, directed by Jerry Wheatley. Our technical director is Gary Joe Rice, and our associate director, Bruce Dunn. Be sure and join us for our next telecast on Saturday, January 28th at 5 p.m. as IU takes on Ohio State.